Good day, students. Today, we shall look into the physics of lasers and in particular, how to achieve lasing action. Einstein coefficients are defined in radiative transitions in order to measure the rate at which absorption or spontaneous emission or stimulated emissions take place in matter. Now, in absorption, the rate of absorption transition is defined as B12 U of nu N1. Here, B12 is the Einstein coefficient for absorption. In spontaneous emission, the rate of spontaneous transition is defined as A21 times N2, where A21 is the Einstein coefficient for spontaneous emission. And in stimulated emission, the rate of stimulated transitions, RST, is defined as B21 into U of nu N2, where B21 is the Einstein coefficient for stimulated emission. Here, U of nu is the number of photons per unit volume in the incident beam. N1 is the population in the lower level and N2 is the population in the upper level. So from these relations, it is clear that depending upon the incident light, the rate of absorption and a rate of stimulated emission, the probabilities of these two are the same because both are dependent on U of nu. Now, depending upon the population of N2, the rate of spontaneous emissions and stimulated emissions, their probabilities also will be equal. In order to achieve lacing action, we need to increase the rate of stimulated emission. Let us see how it is done. First, we try to find the relation between the Einstein coefficient. So at thermal equilibrium, the populations of the atoms at each energy levels remain the same. They do not change. So even if light is incident upon the matter, the rate of absorption will be equal to the rate of emissions. That is, RABS will be equal to RSP plus RSP. Now taking the equations here, we can write B12 into U of nu N1 is equal to A21 N2 plus B21 U of nu N2. Here, I've taken the B terms to one side and the equation is obtained as such. Hence, I get the expression in terms of U of nu as A21 N2 divided by B12 N1 minus B21 N2. Now, here I'm going to divide the numerator and denominator by the term B12 N2. Hence, we get the expression U of nu is equal to A21 by B12, the whole divided by N1 by N2 minus B21 by B12. Now here, the term N1 by N2 is substituted by the Boltzmann's distribution function. Here we have N1 by N2 is equal to E raised to E2 minus E1 by Kt, that is equal to E raised to delta E by Kt, that is equal to E raised to H nu by Kt. Hence, we get at thermal equilibrium, U of nu, the energy density of the incident beam is equal to a21 by B12, the whole divided by E raised to H nu by Kt minus B21 by B12. By Planck's radiation formula, we have the expression for U of nu as 8 by H nu cube by C cube into 1 over E raised to H nu by Kt minus 1. So by comparing these two equations for U of nu, we get the Einstein relations, that is, the numerator here, A21 by B12 is equated to 8 by H nu cube by C cube. And the relation B21 by B12 is equal to 1. That implies B21 is equal to B12. 
the rate of stimulated emissions is equal to the rate of absorptions at thermal equilibrium. And from this relation, we have the rate of spontaneous emission to be 8 by h nu cube by c cube times greater than the rate of absorption. Since the rate of absorption is equal to rate of stimulated emission, I can say that the rate of spontaneous emissions is 8 by h nu cube by c cube times the rate of stimulated emission. So, as the frequency increases, the rate of spontaneous emission of that light will increase. And hence, we will not get laser emissions for longer frequencies or shorter wavelengths. That is why it is difficult to achieve laser action in high frequency ranges like X-rays. Now to achieve laser action, light has to be amplified by stimulated emission. That is, the rate of absorption is given by P12 into U of mu N1. Rate of spontaneous emissions given as A21 N2 and rate of stimulated emissions is given as B21 U of mu N2. Here, in all these expressions, the rate of the stimulated emission or stimulated transitions has to exceed all other transitions. For that, let us find the ratio of stimulated transition to spontaneous transitions given by R1. It will be B21 into U of mu N2 by A21 N2 that is equal to B21 into U of mu by A21 that is R1 is equal to B21 by A21 into U of mu. So to increase the rate of stimulated transitions we should have the factor B21 by A21 to be large and we need u of nu, the incident radiation, to be large. Now let us calculate the ratio of stimulated transition to absorption transition, that is R2. It is given as B21 into u of nu N2 divided by B12 into u of nu N1. Since B21 is equal to B12, it cancels out. Hence we get N2 by N1. Now, this implies that the population in the upper level must be greater than the lower level in order to have stimulated transition. So summarizing, there must be more atoms present in their higher excited states than in the lower energy levels. That is, there must be a population inversion. And for that, pumping of atoms is required for population inversion. A thermal equilibrium usually the ground state will have higher number of atoms and the upper states will have lower number of atoms but in order to achieve laser light we need population inversion where the population at the higher energy states will be greater than the lower energy level the ratio of b to 1 by a to 1 must be large and the radiation field, incident field U of nu must be sufficiently large. It means that the medium, the lacing medium should be flooded with light. Large amount of light should be given and an optical resonator is used to feed the radiation back into the medium. So by using resonators, this light, this incident field is reflected back and forth within the medium and hence we increase u of nu. Now let us see what we mean by population inversion. At thermodynamic equilibrium, at thermal equilibrium, the distribution of the atoms between the energy levels is given by the Boltzmann's distribution law that is n1 by n2 is equal to exponential of e2 minus e1 by kt that is exponential of h nu by kt. Here Usually, N2 population at the upper level is very much less than N1 population at the lower level. And hence, absorption dominates over stimulated emission. 
Now, by pumping mechanisms, we attain the non-equilibrium condition. Here, N2 will be much greater than N1. Population at the upper level will be much greater than N1. And thus, stimulated emission will dominate over other transition. So, population inversion is defined as the non-equilibrium state of the material in which population of the higher energy level exceeds the population of the lower energy level. This is a necessity for lacing action. Now, pumping is the process of providing energy to this laser medium in order to achieve population inversion. There are different types of pumping mechanisms. They are optical pumping, chemical pumping, electrical pumping, and direct conversion. Now, in optical pumping, light is directly flashed into this lacing material in order to excite the atoms in it. So, light is used to raise the atoms to higher energy state. Optical pumping is used in ruby lasers and NDAG lasers. In chemical pumping, the chemical reactions are used to excite the atoms to higher energy state. Chemical oxygen iodine lasers and deuterium fluoride lasers use chemical pumping. In electrical pumping, a strong electric field is applied to this laser material by means of a high voltage power supply. In that, high energy electrons from this high voltage power supply will collide with the atoms and transfer their kinetic energy to the atoms. As a result, the atoms are excited to higher state. Helium neon lasers and carbon dioxide lasers make use of electrical pumping. Now in the direct conversion method, the direct band gap semiconductors like gallium arsenide or gallium indium arsenide laser diodes Electrical energy is directly given to the diode and this causes the recombination of electrons and holes in the junctions. When they recombine, they produce laser light. Now, let us learn about metastable state. For achieving population inversion, it is necessary that the atoms must accumulate in the upper excited levels, that is, the excited state must have a longer lifetime for that. So, a state that has an unusually long lifetime is called a metastable state. The atoms excited to the metastable states remain in that state for a long time and it is of the order of 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 3 seconds. It is 10 power 3 or 10 power 6 times more than the lifetime of ordinary energy levels. Now, it is impossible to create population inversion without a metastable state. So, in the lacing medium, that medium should have metastable states. And it can be readily obtained in a crystal system having impurity atoms. The impurity atoms provide the metastable state. Now, let us look into what are the different parts or the different components of a laser. Mainly, there are three components. They are the lacing material or the active medium, the pump source, and the optical cavity or optical resonator. So, in this figure, we can see that this is the lacing medium or the active medium. It is placed in an optical cavity or an optical resonator, and here the active medium or the lacing medium is pumped by an external energy source. Light is given out to it. Okay. Now, this lacing medium or the active medium can be any solid, liquid or gas. It can be a crystal. It can be gas. It can be a semiconductor. It can be a dye. It can be uh, any medium. The only requirement is that it should have, that material should have metastable state. Now, uh, pump source is used to excite this lacing medium. So, it may be optical, chemical or electrical pumping or by direct conversion. So, by any of these mechanisms, the active medium is pumped. 
Now once it is pumped, the atoms will be in the excited state. Now after sufficient pumping, the atoms start to accumulate in the upper metastable excited state. And when a stray photon light strikes these atoms, it stimulates all the other atoms to undergo stimulated emission and enables light pulse. The initial laser light pulse may be weak and hence it is reflected by means of the mirrors placed in the optical cavity. So the optical cavity can just be two mirrors or it may be an elliptical mirror. Okay, so this cavity will have the inner side polished up to 99.9 percentage reflectivity and this will provide the feedback for light amplification. So light is reflected back and forth, back and forth within this active medium, continuously increasing the amount of stimulated emission from this medium. And as it achieves a particular intensity or the required intensity, it is then taken out through one of the ends as the laser beam. That's all for today's session. Thank you.